Hi everybody, my name is Justin Reese. I'm going to tell you about machine learning on knowledge graphs and ontologies. So to give you a summary up front, um, I'll tell you about KG COVID-19. That's our knowledge graph for COVID-19 response. Um, we originally made this uh, for our ML use case, which I'll tell you about uh, in a minute. Uh, but it's also been uh, used as a general tool for COVID-19 for the COVID-19 research community. Um, so our specific use case was machine learning for for to find uh, drugs that affect COVID-19 outcome. And so you can read all about the knowledge graph itself in this publication. The code and the knowledge graph itself are freely available here. Um, and there's a med archive preprint that will describe the, the effort to find drugs that affect COVID-19 outcome that I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, and then I'll tell you at the end about some, some software that came out of that effort called NEAT, and this is for reproducible graph machine learning. <coughs> okay, so when we originally tried to, uh, to start thinking about how we could contribute to the COVID-19 effort, um, it, it became clear to us that, that the, the challenge here was assembling the data. Basically, there was plenty of COVID-19 data even before the pandemic hit. Um, and then SARS-CoV-2 hit and the research community started generating just scads of data, uh, drug data, viral PPI, sequence data, uh, go annotations and so on and so forth. And there, we've just been inundated by uh, data about COVID-19 and SARS-CoV-2. And so, Data integration really is the main challenge here, and the, the data tends to be siloed and trapped in text and, and behind separate APIs and in various file formats. <clears throat> so I probably don't have to spend a lot of effort to convince you that, that knowledge graphs are a sensible uh, way of solving this problem. So if you go to the trouble of making a, a, a knowledge graph, um, questions such as uh, what FDA approved drugs target a human protein uh, that interacts indirectly with SARS-CoV-2. That would be fairly complicated if you don't if you didn't have a knowledge graph. But if you do have a knowledge graph, then that's a fairly simple graph query. Um, and so here is uh, an overview of COVID-19. Um, so we have about half a million nodes and about 24 relation 24 million relationships between those nodes. Um, really, at the center of of this knowledge graph is uh, our OBO ontologies, including HPO. Uh, Go, Mondo, and Kebi. Um, so those are phenotypes, gene annotations, diseases, and a chemical ontology. And then uh, surrounding that uh, are proteins and genes from the from the virus and the host. Uh, publication data um, via the Cybite annotations of the CORD19 data set. Um, a lot of drug databases. Um, uh, drug and drug target information, phenotypes, gene functions, and PPIs, and and other other things um and so this was uh, as i said we, we we made this for our own use case but um we we sort of uh deployed this in in uh other research consortia including the nvbl which is the department of energy effort that we were involved in uh, and it's also uh deployed in the n3c consortium that's the national covid cohort collaborative um, we're using it ourselves and and also they use it sort of as a as a way of integrating uh, sort of publicly available covid data with their case level clinical data and so how do you actually use this knowledge graph to identify drugs that might be involved in covid19 so we start with the knowledge graph and we apply an algorithm called node to vec um, and that gets us uh, embeddings in in a low dimensional space and they're they're uh, position in that space represents all the information we have about it. So then you can do things like find, you find the SARS-CoV-2 node, and then you you can ask very simple questions like how close are uh, each of these drugs in latent space as measured by cosine similarity. So this roughly gets you some measure of how related these drugs are to SARS-CoV-2. And then you can also do uh, more uh, elaborate machine learning things like uh, doing link prediction to uh, to uh, draw links between each of these drugs in SARS-CoV-2. If you do the latter, um, you can see the, the AU rock is, is quite good. So that works pretty well. Um, so what we end up with is uh, a ranked list of drugs as uh, according to how re related they are to, to COVID-19. Uh, and related here can be, uh, you know, as a positive effect on, on COVID-19 outcome or a negative effect on COVID-19 outcome. Um, and so we want to obviously validate that with real world clinical data. And so our strategy to do that was an was a observational strategy, uh, a retrospective case cohort study. So we, we 
We start with COVID-19 positive patients. And then for each drug, we do the following. We find patients that have an indication for that drug. So for example, uh, if the drug in question was a migraine drug, these would be patients uh, with migraines. And then we split them into treat not treated with the drug and treated with the drug. And then we use an epidemiological method called propensity matching to sort of uh, demographically match all of these patients with all of these patients. And that's things like age and uh, comorbidities and things like that. And then we, we can very easily assess the, the effect that these drugs have on, on COVID-19 severity by just comparing how well these people did with how well these people did. So if you do that uh, for the top 100 ranked drugs, um, you can see that the sample size uh, is quite large in, in a lot of these uh, sort of sub cohorts. Uh, and 18 of the top 100 drugs are, are showing a pretty good signal here. So they, they seem to have some effect on, on COVID-19 outcome. And you can see that the, the odds ratios are, are quite large in some cases, meaning the, the, the effect that these drugs have is, is, is quite large. So uh, we, we started doing a deep dive into um, some of these 18. Uh, what we noticed that it was uh, three of them were COX inhibitors, uh, of which aspirin is one. Aspirin, aspirin came up eighth in, in our ranked list. Um, so uh, you can see that they aspirin does, seems to have a negative effect on the outcomes. So for example, in, the, in patients with uh, a migraine indication, the odds ratio is 3.47. So uh, the, these are these people are doing a lot worse. Same uh, chest pain, fever, uh, myocardial infarction, osteoarthritis, and so on and so forth. All of the, in all of these cases, aspirin is is uh, making COVID worse. Um, and so we see the same signal for other COX inhibitors too. Uh, and so you can read all about that in the in the Med Archive preprint. So this is currently in, uh, under review. Um, so I'll tell you briefly about some software uh, we've been working on called NEAT, uh, Network Embed All of Things. So the problem that this software uh, attempts to, to address is when we applied, when we started doing that, that graph ML experiment that I, that I just described, we quickly discovered that, that our workflows were sort of scattered across different repos and they were often difficult to reproduce for, for that reason. Um, and the, the Python code in the, in the Jupyter notebooks that we made to do this were, were often repetitive and slightly disorganized. And our solution to that was, was software called Neat. Um, so this is entirely YAML driven from the user perspective. So it describes this entire workflow in, in, a, in a YAML driven way. And so that describes exactly how the machine learning should be conducted. And then after the, after the analysis is done, it, it, it's nice documentation about how, how the experiment was done. So this leverages Docker, which you're probably familiar with, um, some software from our lab called KGX that, that basically turns graphs into our internal KGX TSV format. Uh, and Biggin is our implementation of the node de Vec algorithm, uh, and that uses TensorFlow. This is uh, our performant graph library called in small and graph. And you can also uh, um, use Cybert, pre-trained Cybert uh, embeddings for, for textual elements of, of the KG. So after we're done, we push to S3. So this is a, sort of a, a, a work, a, a YAML driven uh, workflow for, for graph ML that's that, that makes reproducible experiments a lot easier. So I'll show you an experiment we did that, that actually applies this. So uh, we're, what we're doing here is applying, uh, we're training an MLP on node devec and optionally we're adding in text embeddings uh, from textual elements such as class names and descriptions. So we start off with Go, we turn it into our uh, internal uh, TSV format. So we hold out 20% of the subclass of edges from, from the Go graph such that we don't create any new con uh, connected components. So the, the graph stays intact. Then we use this graph to uh, train embeddings uh, using node devec and then optionally we'll also embed uh, uh, the class names and descriptions using uh, pre-trained cyber embeddings and we, we concatenate those two sets of embeddings uh, and then we train them uh, an mlp classifier to do link prediction on subclass of edges and then uh, we can see how well we this mlp classifier did using these 20 percent of subclass of edges so if we do that you can see the the adding in the BERT embeddings improves AUPRC, AURC, AROC, and, uh, and recalls. So the recall goes from uh, uh, 
0.2 to about 0.86. So that, that's, a, that's a pretty good improvement. You can also, it's probably worth noting, the precision actually goes down slightly. So this implies to us that probably uh, the way that we're adding these embeddings and needs a bit of refinement, but overall the, 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 the MLP, uh, MLP improves, uh, performs a lot better when we have these cyber embeddings. So some future work, um, we have a lot of work to do to investigate those other top hits in our ranked drug list. Um, we also uh, are going to apply GraphML to our knowledge graph in, the, in, in, in the N3C using clinical data. Uh, and the, the goal here is to help, help efforts to address long COVID. <clears throat> um, I didn't go into this, but we're... Uh, Um, we're doing some work on uh, what we call KG Hub, which is a, an effort to sort of unify different uh, knowledge graph efforts, in, including Phenolator that Tiffany Callahan made and the Monarch Graph, <clears throat> and uh, of course, all of our internal knowledge graphs. Um, and then we're, there's more work to do to use NEAT to improve GraphML on ontologies. That's the OntoML project, which I didn't go into in depth. Um, some acknowledgments. Uh, here are the people at Berkeley Lab, too many to go into. Um, AMD and Google Cloud gave us a lot of support in kind. Uh, Nico helped a lot uh, with uh, the efforts in NEAT. Um, uh, Peter Robinson and Hannah Blau at Jackson Lab, uh, Luca Capoletti at University of Milan, and T Tomasa Fontana at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, Lauren Chan from Melissa Handel's lab and, and Tiffany Callahan at University of Colorado and all the other people listed here too. So thanks for listening. <laughs>